before I dive into the content, I just wanted to give you uh, a little bit of information about myself. Um, I've been in the affiliate marketing space for well over a decade, holding various roles uh, relative to affiliate marketing, from network operations to affiliate management to publisher development uh, at companies like Pepper Jam, GSI Commerce, eBay. And before that, um, I uh, wanted to share with you that I received my undergraduate degree from the University of Delaware and a Master of Business of Administration from the University of Scranton. Some of you might be familiar with the term Scranton from uh, the popular comedy show The Office. I can assure you that I don't work in The Office, thankfully. Um, and on a more personal note, um, I'm raising a two-year-old son, a husband, and a standard poodle. And in my free time, which is practically non-existent, I appreciate fine wine and trying to counteract that fine wine consumption with feeble attempts at fitness. So I wanted to share that with you today um, and lend my perspective to you about why affiliate marketing is uh, what I think embarking on a period of renaissance. As I mentioned, I've been with with the affiliate marketing industry uh, for well over 10 years and have seen it uh, through various economic climates, climates uh, positive in retail uh, trends, and also seen it through challenges like affiliate nexus um, and the like. But thankfully, it's continued to flourish and um, be an industry that inspires change and innovation and constantly pushes through those challenges. And so given my perspective, um, I basically want to share with you today how you can take part of this renaissance and be part of the change and evolution of pushing affiliate marketing forward. So we're going to do that in a couple of ways. The way that the presentation is broken out is I want to first um, share with you some of the pain points and challenges that marketers are seeing uh, within the, the digital landscape as well as in uh, affiliate marketing. And then from there, we're going to explore exactly what a renaissance is and how the growth of the affiliate industry has sort of set the stage for us to embark upon uh, this journey and path of revival and rebirth. And following that, I want to ensure that you can walk away with a couple of concrete takeaways about how you can understand how you can play a definitive role within the rebirth and revival of affiliate marketing um, and partake in that. So I wanted to start today by just lending you some perspective by looking at the statement on the slide and share with you this idea around uh, conversions alone are like social media followers without interactions. Without engagement, it simply doesn't matter. So I'd just like to ask the audience, how many of you have uh, been part of a situation or witnessed a situation of your colleagues where ad spend dollars were just thrown around in the hope that they were going to yield a result but then didn't produce the desired outcome. Has anybody experienced that before or witnessed it? Okay, maybe half the audience. I think what's important to understand here is that um, we need to think about affiliate marketing like we now think about social media, which is Followers alone is not enough. We have to look at the engagements and interactions along that path in order to drive to the optimum affiliate experience, right? So to give you a little bit more concrete example, if you think about um, the quality of social media followers versus the quantity, the age-old recommendation really still holds tr true, which is quality over quantity. We can't look at affiliate marketing anymore and think that the number of publisher partnerships that we have in our program are going to drive to success. We can't look at the number of conversions solely to think about that equating to success. We have to think about all of those engagements and interactions along the way, measuring and looking at the entire consumer purchase path and journey, as well as the entire affiliate value chain. That's what's important. You can't rely on traditional metrics to to get an idea of how the entire purchase journey is impacting the results of your own affiliate marketing campaigns. And what we know from marketers is that there's data available 
but marketers still struggle to understand how they can leverage that data to make informed decisions that can drive campaign success. But the challenge is, is that they're still asking the question, what should I be optimizing to? Right? And so this is often a product of internal conflict of organizations not understanding what are the KPIs or strategic, strategic objectives that marketers should be optimizing to. We know that we have data at, at our fingertips, but we can't figure out how to leverage it to our advantage. We also know from marketers that traditional revenue measure, measurements no longer work. And what I mean by that is marketers and, and brands, agencies, they're no longer looking at traditional uh, revenue metrics. They're no longer looking at revenue as the key performance indicator or looking at conversion. Rather, they're, they're considering all of the factors in that consumer purchase journey or affiliate value chain. And those are things like the customer type. Who is the customer that I'm reaching? Are they new or are they existing? Are they transacting on the device type in which I'm trying to capture market share? Are they purchasing full price products or are they simply using coupons as a means uh, in order to convert? Marketers understand that these are the metrics that equate to success because they're part of the affiliate value chain and the consumer journey. So there's this consensus that we need to move away from traditional metrics and focus more on all of the engagements and interactions that are happening along that consumer journey. We're also in a situation in the industry in which there is a question about the value of affiliate marketing and the channel. There's this stigma that perhaps affiliate marketing doesn't lend the value that, it does, that other channels do, or perhaps it's not driving that incremental revenue or lift that I need it to. And I would argue that if you're fearful of entering the channel because you're afraid of letting go, you're afraid of relinquishing some control to third-party publishers, that it's more detrimental to you to not engage in the channel at all than to play a small, small role in the affiliate marketing channel. So not engaging in affiliate marketing is more detrimental than um, not partaking in it at all. The price of light is less than the cost of darkness. Think about that. But yet, what I find in, in, in my lens and the new, unique position that I sit at Pepper Jam is that there are three sort of challenges that we are faced with when it comes to affiliate marketing. One, marketers are afraid to relinquish control and share information with third-party publishers. Two, they think that affiliate marketing cannot be optimized to in near real time. And three, they just have a general lack of education about the value that the affiliate channel plays in the overall customer journey. And I'm gonna address those three points to sort of uh, debunk the myths that have been supporting this stigma of affiliate marketing. The first is that there are very succinct ways in which you can provide information and still maintain control of the affiliate channel in working with third-party publishers. If you don't, you know, facilitate in that exchange with them, publishers are essentially operating in a black box and they can no longer um, target or optimize to uh, your brand's strategic objectives. So you need to figure out ways in which you can give them some information while still maintaining control to overcome that stigma or that bias around affiliate marketing. This is very easy to do. It can be done through publisher agreements, publisher NDAs, or even just the timing and, and release of information about a particular campaign. The other challenge is around optimization in near real time. There's this stigma that affiliate is labor intensive and time consuming because it's not programmatic. And while affiliate marketing might not be programmatic, there are definitely vendors and relationships that allow you to optimize in near real time. What you can't do is make marketing decisions in real time. We still are dependent upon brands and agencies to set their KPIs in advance of a campaign running 
and make those decisions so that we can optimize them in near real time. So there's still a reliance on marketers to contribute and provide that strategic lens on what they want publishers to optimize to. The third is just about a general lack of education in affiliate marketing. There's the stigma that affiliate marketing is a bottom feeder channel and that um, Coupon publishers play a significant role in sniping consumers from the point of checkout once they've already reached the cart. And while that does happen, there's definitely value to affiliate marketing that um, a lot of people don't realize. In fact, when I work with our team of data scientists and analysts at Pepper Jam, um, they show me the entire picture of the consumer journey. And more often than not, what we find is across digital channels, when affiliate plays um, a role in that consumer's conversion or customer journey, the average order values of those said customers tend to be higher than that of other channels. So there's value there. It's incremental value when, when comparing that to that of other digital channels. Affiliate also tends to have the best performing return on investment in comparison to other digital channels. But there's still this stigma that affiliate marketing is, you know, a bottom feeder or doesn't provide a lot of value in the brand's overall experience. And we need to overcome that. The other issue that we're encountered with is that of the customer. I encourage brands, agencies, and publishers to ask the question, if the customer were here, what would he or she say about the experience of the campaign? Because that's what matters, right? It's the customer experience. So we know that, but what we find is that customers are researching more. They have more choices now more than ever, and choice leads to complexity. And so what we see with that choice leading to complexity is that consumers are researching more. They're leveraging desktop and in-store as a means to understand whether or not they want to convert and make that transaction. For large ticket items that require a bit more research, they're using desktop. They're going in-store. In fact, at Pepper Jam over Cyber Weekend, we saw a 20% lift year over year in desktop revenue alone, which is kind of surprising, right? Because we constantly hear about mobile as capturing more and more market share. But what we can't forget is that consumers are the ones that dictate and decide where they transact and when, whether it's online, in-store, or on any type of device. So as brands and publishers, we need to come together to ensure that we're responding to that consumer experience and providing the best possible um, experience to that customer to ensure success of the campaign. Despite consumers' um, choice, which leads to complexity, we find that there are other obstacles to reaching consumers, as if that wasn't challenging enough, reaching them on any sort of device, at any time, anywhere, any place. We also have these other macroeconomic trends that are occurring, such as affiliate nexus laws or legislation, ad blocking. These are presenting marketers with obstacles and challenging to reaching the customers that they want to reach and prohibiting the effectiveness of their ad dollars. So we need to come together as publishers and brands and figure out how can we reach the customer in the most optimal experience possible. And despite all of the challenges that we're faced with, right? Overload, overload of data, stigmas about the affiliate marketing industry, and catering to the consumer's experience. We've seen in varied reports that affiliate marketing is growing. In fact, affiliate market, the affiliate marketing industry is poised to grow uh, on a compounded annual growth rate by 10% by the year 2020. And we've seen that ad spend increase in varied reports from both Pepper Jam and third-party sources, which is an indication to us that marketers see the value of the affiliate marketing channel 
And so they're investing their dollars there to drive to solutions that they see. In fact, at Pepper Jam, we saw in H1 of 2016 that affiliate spend across our multi-channel uh, clients, which are clients that we support affiliate, paid search, uh, display, et cetera, we found that in H1 of 2016, uh, affiliate represented nearly 30% of overall digital spend. And it stole 3% of ad spend from paid search. So affiliate marketing is a channel in which marketers are investing in because they see the value and they see it as a means to overcome the solutions that they are presented with as marketers. And this, this leads me to 2017, the year of the affiliate marketing renaissance. So let's talk about these challenges and talk about the renaissance. So I think for the audience, it would probably be helpful to understand exactly what a renaissance is by definition. That is a movement or a period of vigorous artistic and intellectual activity or a revival or a rebirth. This is really important to understand, to understand the concept. So going back to our challenges, which are data, stigma about affiliate marketing, and customer experience, we need to look at our customers as guests and we need to understand the data behind it to understand where their needs are. Knowing that, it's pretty obvious, right? The problem is, is that reports suggest that there's still a deep disconnect between C-level executives and marketers about the data at hand and proving results of a campaign. In fact, 80% of CEOs don't trust their marketing teams because of that. They don't trust the data. And marketers feel increased pressure to prove their worth through results-oriented campaigns. But the interesting thing is that less than a third of marketers are actually using analytics. Why? What marketers need to do is get a holistic view of consumer behavior from the data that's available to them. They need to optimize spend and ROI based on the channels that perform instead of investing dollars purely because of budgetary decisions internally. Often we find that this distrust between CEOs and marketers are purely because of internal conflict and uh, misalignment around what are we optimizing to. Should we be optimizing to revenue? Should it be to ROI? Should it be to traffic? Mm -hmm. Marketers need to get aligned with internal teams to understand what they are striving to drive and leverage the data at hand to help them do that. So I'm gonna give you a clear example of a way in which a client used affiliate marketing to their advantage. So iGourmet, it's a long-standing client of Pepper Jam. It's one that engages in uh, the specialty food uh, space. And what they found is that their new customers were um, valuable to them. They needed to drive new customers through all channels, not just affiliate. And part of the reason was because they tend to have higher uh, basket sizes or average order values tied to that customer type. So iGourmet worked with Pepper Jam as a technology vendor in order to pass data to them in order to optimize against that campaign in near real time. What they did was they leveraged our technology to ensure that publishers that drove new customers received a higher commission rate or a higher flat payout than publishers that drove existing customers back to iGourmet. And so this gave iGourmet the opportunity to um, work and engage with publishers to drive efficient campaigns that were focused on targeting new customers. The end result after a month's time was that iGourmet had nearly 60% new customers driven to their site through the means of affiliate marketing because they were supported by a technology vendor that gave them not only the data, but also the ability to optimize against their key performance indicators in advance of conversions taking place. From a revenue perspective, this resulted in nearly 150% year-over-year revenue growth for that same time period because these new customers were so valuable. I mentioned earlier that the other thing that's really important is uh, the customer journey and the customer experience. And when I say that, I mean the actual navigation and usability of the customers from publisher site to brand site. We know that brands want to work with new customers and target them because they're higher value. 
But Pepper Jam did a study with our usability team and data scientists um, with about 200 participants, survey participants. And in the study, what we found was that 43% of them were, 43% of those that uh, did not predominantly use affiliate marketing to shop were frustrated by their experience in the affiliate channel. And so they gave up on using publisher sites because of these setbacks. Brands and publishers need to come together in order to provide a seamless customer experience, whether it's digitally or in an omni-channel capacity. I'm gonna to explain to you some of the results of the study um, so you can understand what were the three reasons why customers used affiliate marketing to begin with. The first was to save money. The other uh, reason was because they had fun browsing or used affiliate marketing for entertainment value. And the third was because they were just recommended by family or friends to uh, shop through a given publisher site. So there was benefit. They saw value in affiliate marketing. But what stopped them from continuing to use these sites was more than three reasons. It was because the sites were hard to navigate. It took too much time to find the product or the deal that they were um, advertised initially. The deals weren't good or the, or the deal messaging was vague or misleading. The transition from the publisher site to the advertiser site was clunky. So there was more negative connotation with the, cost, the consumer experience in shopping through publisher sites than there was positive. As I mentioned, this was across 200 participants. They were real life participants that came into our lab where we, where we collected uh, qualitative and quantitative feedback through surveys. We also used eye tracking to determine how the, they were reacting in the whole consumer purchasing experience. We had them do real life purchase, purchases through publisher sites. And their feedback was critical. I mean, this is just a sampling of what they said. Uh, when they clicked on the coupon code from the publisher site, it didn't take them to the product that was advertised on the advertiser page. Publishers had vague messaging around uh, the percentage or dollar off. They preferred more concrete promotions and messaging rather than vague ones. Or it just took them too long to find the product they were looking, are because, looking for because of poor navigation and usability of the publisher sites. So there was definitely a disconnect between publishers and brands and creating that seamless customer experience. So I'm here to tell you that publishers and brands and agencies need to come together to forge that experience and, and create something that is seamless to the consumer because the consumer doesn't care what has to go into the campaign in order to make it work. They expect that it worked from the brand side. The other point that I wanted to leave you with today was around maximizing affiliate marketing beyond what you know as traditional affiliate marketing. What I mean by that is what I'll refer to as a concept called partner marketing. Affiliate marketing can be used to tap into partners and distribution networks that fall outside of coupon loyalty and content sites. Pepper Jam worked with a client. It was a yoga apparel brand that knew that it had an opportunity to tap into yoga instructors that had their own audience of yogis in their classes that they wanted to you know, leverage purchases from. So we worked to collaborate and come up with a campaign in which um, the brand and Pepper Jam uh, provided yoga instructors with their own unique publisher code, which they then printed on their own uh, tangible business cards. They passed out the business cards with the code in class to the students and in, in turn, the students went to purchase from the yoga apparel brand, um, no click initiated, it was purely offline. And the results from the technology was that Pepper Jam gave credit to the yoga instructor for referring that purchase. So there is a way to use and leverage affiliate marketing in something that is not traditionally affiliated with coupon and loyalty sites. So you need to think about that and how can affiliate marketing help you solve your problems that you're faced with as a marketer beyond the coupon and loyalty channels. The results of the program were that it drove 28% of total program revenue and of their publisher base, 
were yoga instructors that they had recruited. So it was successful. We had another example of a partner marketing effort which involved charities. A jewelry uh, retailer had about 50 uh, charity partnerships that they wanted to leverage as a means to advertise a product that they were donating proceeds from to charities. So they got the charities to sign up as publishers in a non-traditional means. The publishers had the appropriate tracking links and codes. And they shared that across social media with their own users, which was unique distribution. As a result, any purchase that came from the charity partner, the retailer donated 10% of that purchase back to the charity. That was the commission. And the affiliate platform reported on that. So it's turning the tables and turning our heads on affiliate marketing as we know it to use it to our advantage. And in this example, we had a really great um, tie-in to cause-related marketing. So you can't think about affiliate as only a channel that taps into coupons and loyalty as its distribution, but rather one that embraces all components of digital marketing in order to drive success for marketers. So, I want you to think about maximizing affiliate marketing and partaking in this renaissance as we know it and embark and enter 2017. So a few key takeaways I wanted to leave you with were, and reminders, were one, you need to know your customers inside and out. You need to understand your data. That's very important to measure, quantify, and analyze data. But you also need to be optimizing to it. Work with partners and vendors that give you that flexibility so that you don't have to take a rear view approach to your campaigns. You should optimize in near real time, not two weeks after the fact. The other is that you should leverage your network of affiliate partners or publishers to your advantage. Don't get caught up in the bias or the stigma that affiliate partners um, eliminate your ability to control the channel. Leverage them, because when they succeed, you succeed. It's a performance marketing industry. They're bought into your success. So if you let them in and don't, operate, or don't allow them to operate in a black box, their success will mean your success. So leverage that network. The third is that you need to understand the customer journey. And by that, I don't mean analytics. I mean the customer experience. Walk through the campaign experience to see and feel what the, what the consumer experience is to understand what are the breaking points. Or is it seamless enough? Do they think that this is um, representative of the brand that we want to be? Your publishers and brands need to work together in order to create that joint seamless experience. And finally, think beyond traditional affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing can be used as a means to tap into partners um, and their distribution to drive success as a marketer. This might mean ambassadors, bloggers, employees, charities. Don't think of it as, as just coupon on loyalty. There is real opportunity to turn affiliate marketing on its head and leverage it for greater benefit. So I wanted to share this with you today because this is the unique uh, position that I, see, I sit in and am able to see on a daily basis given that you know, we support partnerships and connections across brands, agencies, and publishers. There's a lot of unique activity happening in the affiliate marketing space, but collectively we need to work together in order to drive the industry forward. So I would ask that each of you walk away today just willing to partake in the affiliate marketing renaissance in 2017. Thank you for your time.